Marriage is a journey, not a destination. And uh, you're not, as my wife said, we're not, you're not the same person you were when you first got married. You change. Life changes, right? You go through different things, and then you hit menopause, and praise God. And <laughs> men, we hit that midlife crisis. Come on now. It's a real thing. You know, you start, like, functioning, like, man, where am I? And uh, you need to get around other guys that are married, other women of God. And so get to Amen. a connect group. It yes. is going to help you. Okay, Romans 8.28. Here's a scripture that I, I chose for the 20 years and 20 things. And uh, Romans chapter 8 and verse 28. Here's how the Bible reads. Write it down in your notes. But it says, and we know that in all things, God works together for the good. Someone say it's all good. I know it's difficult, but it's going to be all good, the Bible says, for those who love him and have been called according to whose purpose? His purpose. So everybody just look at me. God can use everything you've been through for his good. So the difficult, and, and that's one of the, it's a great scripture, but it's so hard to live out. Because we love quoting it to people. When someone's going through something hard, you're like, hey, everything works out for good when you love God. But when you're the one going through it, you're like, how in the world is this going to work out for good, right? And so I think our journey, if I had to summarize it, is God has worked everything out for the good. Now sitting here, you know, about to embark on our 20-year wedding anniversary, I say like, man, look, look what the Lord has done. He's done such an amazing work where I was not raised in a Christian home. Um, you know, fortunately, dad succumbed to his uh, addictions, drug addiction, alcohol addiction, gambling addiction. He left my mom when I was 10 years old. And so uh, the only memories I have of him is of him verbally abusing my mom, physically abusing my mom, um, just running out of the house telling me how crazy my mom is and very chauvinistic. And uh, it's just, just uh, I had the wrong picture. And sometimes, you know, you don't know what's, what's worse for him to never be around or to give you a wrong picture, right? And so my whole concept of marriage was just like I had no foundation. And then on the flip side, her parents are going on how many years married now? I think they're at 47. 47. They're trying to catch up to Ernie and Martha. So 47 yeah. <laughs> years, right? You know, not perfect. We don't want to paint a picture of perfection. They had their, their, their years of growing. Um, but they've been married, right? She was raised in a Christian home, foundations. Her father was a pastor. So Pastor Marie's a PK, pastor's kid. I'm a PK too, poor kid. Come on, somebody. Anybody out there? Uh, anybody feel me? Okay. So anyway, <laughs> that's my joke. But um, so total opposites, y'all. Like total, total opposites. And, you know, I went through the school of hard knocks, and people sometimes ask me, well, how did you learn to become that husband? I said, there it is right there. I had to learn. You, you, the question is the answer. I've had to learn and say, God, I want to study how I can become this, how I can actually be something I never saw, okay, and, and not repeat what I did see. And so I just want to give you hope that if you're, you share my story where you were raised in a home that you didn't see a healthy marriage, God can reverse the curse through the help of Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody. You can be the curse breaker. I, I mean it with all of my heart, like with everything and every fiber that I have, that God will teach you how to do that. And so you're in the right place. Is it going to take work? Absolutely. But that's the fight you want to win. Does that make sense? That's the fight you actually want to win. You don't want to win the stuff that doesn't make sense. So here are 20, 20 things that my wife and I, I, I wrote a list of 20, then she wrote a list of 20, and then we both put it together. So you're kind of getting it all, all mixed together like a good, you know, gumbo or whatever you like to eat. You know what I mean? And so here's number one in no particular order. So these are just, they're in no particular order. We just wrote them as they came to us. And um, maybe there needs to be like a book or something, huh? We should co-write a book. Yeah, I'd love that. That'd be great, huh? That is Kingdom great Couples idea. coming yes. soon to a bookstore near you. Anyway, all right. We got to do that. Or on your podcast. My podcast, too. Yeah. Yeah, nothing to do a book. Podcast. We'll put in a book. Amen. So I give it to my children and say, learn this. Like okay. So. Yes. 20 things we learned here. Number one, no particular order. Honey, what's number one? Never stop dating each other. Never stop dating each other. That's right. So talk a little bit about it. I feel like I talked too much. Go ahead. No, I talked a lot too. <laughs> okay. yeah. Yeah. Never stop dating each other. It's important that you yeah. have, you were talking about, you didn't get to finish. You were saying the 777 principle. Yeah. So every seven days, go on a date. Yeah. So every seven days, um, and it's going to be another point here, but, uh, I would just say, let me, let me just do the seven, and I'll get to the other seven in a second. But the seven days is you want to do, it's the 777 principle. 
Every seven days, you want to go on a date. So a, a, a focused time with your spouse. And um, people call it date night. That's cool. If you want to add something to it, date night, mate night. And everybody <laughs> said amen. Amen. That's right. And so, the ladies too. Amen. That's right. So date night, mate night, right? And, um, and so you want to have a date night, but it doesn't have to be a night. So it could be date breakfast. Like we, Monday mornings is my breakfast with my wife and, uh, cause that's my day off. And so Mondays uh, you're going to find me having breakfast. And so, uh, date breakfast and mate breakfast. I don't know. Okay. Praise God. But, uh, so Mondays, the, I love so, the total comes the, out. The, the El Lobo. <laughs> <laughs> so go on regular ones. Um, and so what I, what, what I mean by this is I had to learn, listen, Fellas, I'm learning, and I still am learning, is I had to learn that I n we never stop pursuing each other. Yes, like, each other. the fire grow goes out. Think of a, of a fire. Every time, you know, a natural fire, not the gas ones we have now, but the, you know, because it never burns out. But you have to put a log in it, right? You have to put a log. And every time you put a log, the fire keeps burning. Mm -hmm. Your marital fire will only keep going as you put a log in there. So you got a log in a date. See the play of words there? Log in a date. Log in a date. And so you have to put a log in that fire because no one's responsible to keep that marital fire but you. Nobody else is going to keep it going. And you don't want anybody else trying to mess with your marital fire. Can I get an amen? So when, and, and when you got married, let me say this statement. You said, I do, not I'm done. You said, I do, not gotcha, I'm done. Right? No. Pursue each other. Go ahead. And, you know, sometimes, you know, as you, as you progress in years in your marriage or maybe you enter your marriage and you're a blended family, you already have children in the picture, and which is great. But it's for, for as a woman, I needed to know that I wasn't conquered, but that I am continually being pursued and that, that he desires to be with me. And that is a big part of these dates that we have is that I want to, that we continually date each other is that... I like, I like seeing in your eye that you want to be with me and that you desire to spend your extra time, your restful time with me. So those date yeah. nights rekindle that for me mm -hmm. and then for you as well. So if you have kids, a, a practical way to do it is do like a, like a, a babysit, babysitter swap. So find like a, maybe a, a good couple that you're good friends with, someone trust, reliable. Don't just be like, hey, drop, here's my kids. And they're like winos, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I mean? Getting high, like, don't do that, right? So be like maybe a good couple, even within the church, that you're like, right, kids, maybe the same age, and be like, hey, if you watch our kids one week, we'll watch your kids one week. And you just work it out. Don't cost no money, just back and forth. And that's a great way, again, why to be a part of a good community is to be like, yeah, totally cool, man. But obviously keep it fair, because if you got five and they got one, <laughs> they'll be like, bruh, you got five, okay? So, you know, maybe find someone, and, and that's just a good little, little, just little ways to have a barter system, you know, and be like, and, and it'd be really cool. Okay, number two is, um, in no particular order, something that I've had to learn is to speak prophetically over each other. Speak prophetically over each other. What do I mean by that? Um, if you're new to Christianity or you're new to the, the Word of God, prophetic is a new word. But what I have found is a lot of times we speak pathetically towards each other. Okay, what does that mean? It means that we just, we're just always speaking to our, the worst part of each other. Demeaning. Yeah, go, yeah, say, say, use your microphone. Go ahead. Demeaning, right? You're demeaning each other or we're, we're saying, you know, you always. You're always. You're never. Don't speak in absolutes. Speak prophetically. You know, prophetically is, is literally um, calling out write this down, call out their kingdom potential, call out their kingdom potential. And that is, that's, that's our job to do where, you know, I don't care what anybody says. Listen, I, I, I just, sometimes it, it's good. And it's a bad thing, but I guess it served me well, but I could be, someone can flip me off and cuss me out. I'd be like, whatever, brah. You know what I mean? Like, I don't care. But one person I care is her words. Like her words mean a lot. And ladies, you got to understand this. Your words mean something to your man. Like, those are the most important words. And if all you've done is nag him, okay, here we go. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. I, I felt it. Uh-oh, here it comes. <laughs> okay. No. The Bible says, I always got to go to the Word of God because then you can't mess with me. The Bible says, it says it's better to live on the roof yes, than, with a nag than in the house of a nagging wife. Right. That's what the Bible says. So if you're nagging him, that's why he don't want to hear your voice. 
That's why we don't listen to you. Because a, a man, we're wired that once it's like, and you know what? And all the time, and you know, and that's what it sounds like to us. And every time, and, I, and how many times have I told you? And I, I, we're like, we go like this, like it. We got this like crazy skill that you can talk, we don't hear nothing. Come on, somebody. Come on. I get an amen. You're like, what? I don't even, you can do like nag all you want. I just, like this, like a, you know what I mean? And I could be doing, working out. And, oh, you, what's that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, uh-huh. Cool. And so, so you're you losing your power in him because you have abused it by n nagging him. I'm, uh, ladies, I'm trying to help you because this is what the Bible says. He's going to go to the roof. Now, he may still be in the house, but in his mind, he's gone. He's not there. No man has ever said this. I just want to thank God. My wife nagged me to greatness. You know, she just really built me up. You know, she was just on my case. No, has said no man ever, okay? So you have to speak prophetically to him. In that man is a young boy. What I mean by that young boy? Is he never had a father that spoke to him with power. Never, and, and even if his mom said it, we expect a mom to go, Hercules, Hercules. Like, we expect that, right? So it's your mama, right? So not that we don't care what our mom says, but it's just my mom, right? But when we have a woman that was not my mother, but the woman that he chose, because he chose you. He, he said, will you marry me, right? He, you're the girl he chose. He loves you. When your words speak to him prophetically, you have the power. God has anointed you, has gifted you to speak the kingdom potential in his life. And you recognize that. You'll call it out to grace. And I love that my wife, she does that. That's one thing I wanna, I wanna just really commend you. Thank you, honey, for being like, she's like, speak prophetically to me. Honey, there's great things. I know your talent. And she would just speak the kingdom potential. And someone's like, wow, she believes in me. I better believe in myself, you know what I mean? And so thank you, honey. But you are gonna say something? Yes, that uh, you kind of said what I was gonna say about you can't neg your husband into greatness. You can't criticize him into greatness. But also, um, if you treat him like a little boy, then he'll act like a little boy to you. And you will never let him grow into being the man in the home that God created him to be if you're constantly beating him down the moment he walks through the door. So women, you know, I know we have our monthly cycles. I know maybe some are premenopausal, postmenopausal, whatever it may be. We have, we have our hormones. We have our things. But never, you, never weaponize that against your husband, the one that you're spending your, your, your life with, that you're in covenant with. To never use that as a weapon against him. If you're ever going to use it as a weapon, then just start rebuking the devil if you have to. You know what I'm saying? But what I'm saying is build him up. Build him up. Build up his ego. Because, listen, nobody should be building him up the way that you build him up. And then not only that, but to speak prophetically into your husband's life, it's, it helps to ask questions what he needs prayer on. You'd be surprised. We're going to get on to that one. Oh, I'm jumping ahead. Yeah, let's just stay right Okay, okay. So... That's, we'll get to that. I'm just, I want to keep us on track. You're doing great. Thank you for keeping You're me on track. You're doing amazing. See, he keeps me on so, track. prophetically. Yes. And last thing I'll say to that, then we'll go to the next point, is guys, you have to as well speak to the greatness in your wife. We need, we need to raise up men that are not afraid of powerful women. Good. Okay. Please. Yeah, you can clap on that. Thank you. Who are not afraid, not intimidated by powerful women and successful and well. successful women and so like I, I not that I do it out of being you know um, loose or facetious but but I want my wife to be a powerful woman like go ahead you are powerful and so let's not be the the old school guys that are chauvinistic you know like my, my grandfather you know um, he was chauvinistic I mean so much so he was a, a chain smoker I mean he was a walking chimney man he would just like, he'd be sitting, at, he'd, be sitting he'd be sitting on the couch, and, and he wouldn't even light his own cigarette. He'd be like, and my grandma right away light his cigarette. You know? And, and, and he, he prided himself in keeping her low. We need to break that nonsense. Like that to me, that's not, that's not powerful. That's like, dude. And if you were raised a, with a chauvinistic father or a chauvinistic like that pushes women down, you are missing out on the power couple you're supposed to be. 
So speak prophetic. She's a lioness. Tell, tell her she's going to do good. And you bring it. It's not going to take away from you. It's only going to add to you where you're both going to be powerful. Say amen. All right, let me move on. Number three, I told you. This is a miracle. What, next year, we'll finish the 20. No, I'm just joking. Number three, stay current. No particular order. Stay current. What I mean by staying current is know how each other are doing. Go ahead. Yes, okay, so that's what I was getting into. In order to speak prophetically also, it helps to know where your husband is at, where your spouse is at. So ask, ask the right questions. Hey, how are you doing? And don't just settle for fine or good or these one, you know, one word yeah. answers. Dig in and say, you know, I desire to know more. And, you know, men aren't really uh, prone to talk, expound. Yeah, that's true like women do, and I understand that, but it is worth the effort. That's why those date nights are important. That's why they're good, because you feed them, you get them talking. Yeah. I'm telling you, that's, that's the way to get them talking, is you feed them, you, you know, I don't know. Wait till our hearts is through our stomach. Yes, amen, and other ways too, but you know. <laughs> well, since you asked. <laughs> so um, having those, those intimate moments, not just physically, but communicating with one another, saying, I want to know what's going on in your life. How are you doing? And this is another great way to say it that isn't so abrasive. You can say, hey, what can I pray for you about? I'm going to be praying for you today. What, what is something that I can, I can pray for you about today? Hey, you know what? I'm going on, I'm, I'm fasting today and I'm fasting for you. Give me one thing that I can fast for you about today or that I can pray for you about today. And I'll tell you, he'll tell you one thing. He'll tell you one thing. You can start from there, and then that's how you begin to stay current and connected with your spouse is that you know what their heart prayer is. Because um, like last night how Pastor Matthew was saying, um, if you're not home, you can't defend your home. So stay current. Like, like I don't know how many times, you know, we don't do as much counseling anymore because I'm not good at it. Like I know you think, like, counsel me, Pastor. Trust me, you're not, you don't want me to. You don't. Because I'll just be like this. Stop it. You know? And... <laughs> He, he's good I'm at sorry. It. No, you're, she you're says, actually really good No, she it. says I am, but the truth is I, as soon as you, you start are. talking, I already have four ways of how to fix it. And y'all, awesome. and, and I, no, listen, but then you, I don't want to talk anymore. And <laughs> just go fix it. And I fix it in three minutes. We're done. You know what I mean? And God bless you. And then they don't, and then if you don't do it, I'm like, I'm not talking to you. Do the four things I said. So I'm giving you 20. Okay. <laughs> Praise God. You're welcome. Okay. So. I'm not good at it. So, but anyhow, back to staying current is when you're staying current, essentially what you're doing is you want to know like, like how many marriages we counsel that in the past not anymore would just say, I don't even know you're going through that. I don't even know you. You didn't even ask me. You didn't even tell me. And here comes the Jerry Springer show. Uh, out the, uh, out from the door. You know what I'm saying? It's like, <laughs> so it's like, don't just, you can know how many big things you can avoid. Because they're little, but if you don't, you don't deal with them, they grow into big monsters. Number four, pray together. Number four, pray together. And, and I love that you did this, um, Pastor Marie, when we were all together today. You had the husband pray for me. I was, I, was, I was so touched by that. Because that, if I had to give any picture of this conference, that was it right there. Like, to me, that was the part where I, I literally pulled out my phone. I just, I did a quick video like, this is what I'm talking about. Like, there's just, there's just something supernatural when you pray actually together not separate like hey i prayed for you and she's like well what did you pray for me about you know <laughs> lord you need to get this crazy woman i'm saying <laughs> but when you pray together i can't even tell you how many times i cannot tell you how many times i've, I've had to do this give me your hand and i go let's just pray honey because you know what it's this getting low at it it's just going we don't need it to go Let's just pray. And you're not going to want to pray, but I don't want to pray. You know what I mean? It was like, come out in Jesus. <laughs> it's the truth. It's the truth. Your flesh doesn't want to. I, I want to argue right now. You know what I mean? Because it's the principle. It's the principle, you know? You Especially know what? when you feel you got a good point. Yeah, you know, you know what like, I mean? But it's like, you, you know what? You got a good one, and you just want to drive let's, it let's in. Let's just pray. You it's know? rare that I'm like right, right, and I have a really good right answer, and I want to use With it, our kids, but, you know, yeah. with our kids, yeah. let's just pray. And then, like you said, let's pray for each other. And so that, that's just, you know, maybe if you want to expound a little bit about that, but just praying together. You got it? You got it, yeah. Okay, cool. Number five, um, again, no particular order. What I've learned in 20 years of marriage is you have to build a solid financial house. Build a solid financial house. Large portion of arguments and divorces in marriage happen over finances. 
Like so many right. marriages yes. are, are, they love each other, but the reason is because they have not built a strong financial house. You've got to get your finances in order. A successful marriage is going to be tough if you're not on the same page financially. I, I got an amen from someone or a gasp over there. You know, someone got laid out. Boom. Receive it. <laughs> I'm just telling you the truth. Because you're not on the same page financially. You're, you're just, one is trying to save, the other one's trying to spend. You know, and, and there's just such an argument. And it could be either or. Sometimes it's the guy, you know. The guy, but I, I'm not a spender. I don't spend. She buys a bunch of little stuff. Yeah, but bro, you come home with an 85-inch TV. <laughs> or you come home with a brand new charger car. You know, and it's like, you do the big purchases, you know. You didn't talk it over with your spouse. And now you're in an argument. Because why don't you go get that $900 car payment? You know we can't afford it. Yes, we can. I've been working overtime. It's like, oh, my gosh. Here we go. Right? And or, vice versa, know, too. And vice versa. Vice you know, versa. why did you buy that? You know, you, buy that you know she might the open shoes. up a credit card you didn't know about. <laughs> I say, hello, somebody. You know? I told you I know. pretty fast. Amen. Because I realized I had to pay for the credit card <laughs> yeah. from the account that I was trying exactly. to avoid. Hello. <laughs> Yeah, or, you know, you start getting so in credit issues, and, and I'm just, I'm telling you, we've, we've, I've been at this pastoring for now coming on 16 years. You have no idea how many couples, they don't, they think this is not important, you know. It's important to build a solid financial house. So budget plans, spending plans, you got to do it. I can't tell you what has brought success to our marriage is I've had to, like, say, we're going to get our finances in order. No, we're not going to have this high bills. No, we're not going to. No, we're not going to do that. And no, you know, there was a time where, you know, there was some discipleship going on here. You know, like, I'm just, <laughs> just being honest. Really and and maybe you're here and you need to hear this type of talk. That's what let us survive. Yeah, because yeah, you know, true. we we were we were managing apartments. Yeah. We were in a one bedroom uh, apartment. Wasn't a bedroom. It wasn't a bedroom. It was a studio. Okay. Yeah. A one a one bedroom studio that. That we were paying like three hundred dollars a month. Yep. It was man we were managing. I think it was like ten or eleven units out, out in Downey, mm -hmm. and um, and what's it called? Uh, we had. I was like, right. I said, listen. The only way we're ever gonna get our home one day, the only way we're ever gonna build a financial house is we've got to be on the same page. Because everybody, right. Mary says, I want to buy a house one day, but your spending habits are not proving you want to buy a house one day. Okay, I'm stepping on toes. Okay, you know we want to go on a vacation. Yeah, but your priorities are out of whack. Okay, you're not going to be able to build that financial house if you're not in the same place. Okay, you want to go, one day we're going we're gonna to invest in a, in, a, in a rental property, but the way you're living isn't going to build that. So I literally had to put my wife to, in those points, we're on the same page, okay, so understand yes, we had yes. a lot of conversations. Yes. And, um, and um, I had to say, you're going to be on the cash system. And uh, she gave me her, her debit card, not even the debit card, because she, she used to just swipe daddy's card. Okay. <laughs> And, and yeah, it's just real talk, okay, guys? And so we're like, do, are we going to be homeowners one day or not? Yes, right. I said, honey, do you want to yes. right. buy a home one day? Yes. Do you want, do you want to get yes. out of this managing apartments? And I remember you yeah. wrote it all out for me. Everything, You yeah. said, these are our scenarios. If we don't save, this is yeah. where we're going to end up. This is where we're going to end up if we save this much. And this is where we'll end up if we really pinch it right yeah. now and we go full-blown. Yeah. This is what we can do. And you would give me these three pictures. Yeah. And... When he showed me the bigger picture and the greater thing, I went all in. Yeah. I mean, I went through, you know, years where yeah. my furniture didn't match and yeah. the walls, you know, were dirty yeah. and... Don't play piano just yet. I'll tell oh, you sorry, when. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. unless you play... Uh, no, no, no. My yeah, yeah, hello. No, you play that. <laughs> That's our exit song, actually. Yeah. <laughs> but... Um, but there was just a season there where I had to kind of give up some things that mm -hmm. I really wanted. There's even a season, you know, uh, even building the church and, yeah. and sacrificing and doing certain things. I didn't get my nails done. I didn't get my hair done. I mean, it was just all kinds of things that yeah. we were just chopping, chopping down. And we knew that it was for a season, but it was for a greater thing that we had uh, a goal to reach. Yeah. So did you hear that, ladies? A full, how long? A year or two? For, for that portion, yeah. and then another one For a one year, in she didn't get her nails done for a whole year. Yeah. Some of you already are not in. You're like, I'm not in on that. <laughs> Some of you ladies, right? A whole year, she was like, I'm not going to get my nails done. Let's save that so that we can build a solid financial house. Saying no to yourself today to say yes to yourself later. A whole year, if not more, she didn't get her hair done. Now, well, some of you are like, like. My friend, yeah. she did it for $40, and I've got. You, you know what I'm saying? The hookup. The hookup. You know, the plug, the right? Yeah, she and came so, to my house. But God the point is, that's. 
So, so people today might look like, yes, I own multiple companies, multiple businesses. Last year I had one of the largest years. I've given my salary back to the church for the past three years. I'm, by the way, I'm a volunteer here. I'm on the dream team. I do this because I love God. I pray I can do that every year. To God be the glory. I run multiple companies. But that didn't start in year 20. That started back in year one. Yeah. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Back in year one. That's true. And I'm just trying to help you. You're never going to build a financial house. If you just think, well, we'll just, we'll just blow it all. Well, then you're going to be stuck all the time. And, and so, I didn't yeah. want to. I mean, I know I got that credit card yeah. and that was a whole thing. But, yeah. you know, at the same time, I didn't want to mm -hmm. um, make my husband look like he couldn't provide for me by going to my parents and asking for money. Right. And getting things that I wanted, like whether it be shoes or an outfit or whatnot. Um, we were on the same page during yeah. that time. And we... Right. Um, and we worked together. We I want to say this real quick. Mm -hmm. My wife and I, we did this cool exercise actually a couple of days ago. We counted, we today have 12 streams of income together. Thank you for that. Come on. Don't be a hater. Appreciate the clapping. We have 12 streams of income. Okay. My goal is to have like 20. Praise God. We have, that's all, our rental properties, investments, companies we own, everything stuff. I'm just telling you, and I, I tell a lot of young couples, they're like, man, how do I do it? I'm like, you got to have, build a financial house if you, want, if you want to succeed. Welcome to American Mission Fields, unless you want to move to another country. Not me. God bless. I'll be right here. Good. So I swear I'm, I swear I'm called to be. So build multiple streams of income, be on the same page, and watch. Now, we're going to prosper for the right reasons. We're not going to prosper to bling, bling, bling. We're going to prosper. Why? To build generational blessing, not generational bills. Come on, somebody. To be a blessing to the kingdom and to see God do something great. Amen. Number six. Here it is quick. Oh, my gosh. I am, I'm out of time. I'm on overtime. Everybody just. just, just You're just, on number six. Anyway. I know. Who chose 20 things? You. <laughs> <laughs> I did. We thought no, it was a good is, idea. Be a man of God. Be a woman of God. Write that down. Amen. Be a man of God. Be a woman of God. My wife says this best how you said don't wait. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I said it yeah. earlier. Don't wait for your husband to be a man of God to give you permission yeah. uh -huh. to be a woman of God. Yeah. You, be yeah. 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 <laughs> you be her now. You be her now. Be her now. And you operate as the woman of God yeah. that God called you to be because your husband is not going to be mm -hmm. standing by you when you're at the pearly gates and Jesus asked, or God asked, what did you do with my son Jesus? You're going to have to give your own answer. So you have to work out your own salvation in fear and trembling. Yeah. So you be yeah. accountable to your salvation mm -hmm. and to your convictions and pray yeah. for your husband in the process if you're one of the wives. Not oh, yeah, not yet. Yeah. Yeah. Not yet, not yet. No, no, not yet. Because yeah. they're going to think I'm done. I'm not. Come on. It does kind of uh, slow it down. Yeah, no, kind of yeah, don't slow me down. I'm going, I'm going high speed right now, high speed. <laughs> I know, I know. Okay, yeah, rapid no fire, piano. rapid fire, rapid yeah. fire. So be a man of God. Um, let me just say this. If you are anointed, listen to me. I had to figure this out. God has anointed me to, to help my wife get healed, and God has anointed her to help me get healed. Right, amen. So mm -hmm. we're, you are part of your spouse's healing process. Did you hear what I said? So you are part of your spouse's healing process. You can either add to the hurt or you can add to the healing. God heals people through people. And so look at if you get hurt, you go to the hospital, you use the doctor to heal you. The point is you're, you're part of their healing. Now, here's a revelation. This is heavy. I, I want you to receive this. Ephesians 5.25, the Bible says, husband, love your wife as who loves the church? Christ. Christ. It didn't say Jesus. I'm going deep, so put your floaties on. It didn't say as Jesus loves the church. It says as Christ loves the church. Why? Because Christ, the word Christ is what was on Jesus. Christ is not Jesus' last name. Let that sink in. Christ means the anointed one. You have been anointed. The Bible says the anointing loves the church. You have been anointed to help your spouse get healed and to be changed. And so use that anointing to help them get healed. Put a good amen right there. Number seven, don't cuss at each other. This is one of our personal yeah. rules that has been a blessing to us throughout yeah. our marriage is we don't cuss, and therefore we don't cuss each other out, yeah. ever. We don't use profanity in the home. Our mm -hmm. kids have never heard us use a profan profane word. Yeah. And it, it, it keeps the respect in the home. Yeah. It keeps the honor in the home. And loose lips sink ships. And yeah. you, once you start cussing a little bit, it can, you know, then you start throwing some F-bombs. And then you get a little more comfortable throwing them. And then you start throwing them at each other. And then, you know, it creates such an ugly yeah. fight. And that's what makes a, 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 a movie rated R, right? The more F-bombs that are in it, you don't want your home to be rated R. Yeah, that's good. And so um, here's what I say. To the question if someone had about arguing, you're like, um, even in war, when two nations are bombing each other and trying to kill each other, there's even rules of engagement, mm. right? There's rules. You don't bomb hospitals. You don't hurt the wounded. Like, there's rules. You've got to have some rules of engagement when you start arguing. 
Just learn how to argue correctly. It's okay to argue, argue correctly, but you've seen the wrong picture of arguing. So what you don't, when, when you argue, have rules of engagement. Say when you say rules of engagement. Rules of engagement. And you gotta make those rules of engagement with your spouse in times of peace, not times of war. So when you guys are peaceful, let's, let's make some rules that when we argue, we're, not, we're gonna follow these boundaries. And so that's what my wife and I yep. did. We yep. said, these are the rules. Are when, rules. when we argue, number one, we're not gonna cuss at each other. Okay, we're not gonna be like, you know what, bleep you, you. Once you do that, they, you ain't even listening anymore. You're like. Or they text it to each other now. Oh, mercy of the Lord. Shando <laughs> robo, Amen. You know, it's like, so don't cuss at each other. So make sure you don't re disrespect each other publicly. It goes back to publicly. Ephesians 5 yeah. where it says, wives, respect your husbands. Yeah. Respect them. Mm -hmm. Use respect. For someone, I mean, if you wouldn't talk to mm -hmm. your boss like that, why are you going to talk to your husband like that? Yeah. You know, if you don't talk Vice to people person. that you look up to like yeah. that, then don't talk to your husband like that. Don't talk right. to your spouse like that. Yeah. That's not that's not uh, creating an environment where you're you're nurturing your vineyard. Right. It's not. It's just not going to help you accomplish. No one has ever right. said, you know what? Ever since you cussed at me, you know what? You're right. Yeah. When you put it like that, right? No. It doesn't help. Say amen, okay? Amen. Number and eight. And if you've been talking to each other like that, is then repent and say from this day forward, this we're day not forward. We ain't doing that to each other because it, no, it's yes. not going to help. Number eight, never use the D word. That never is use a big the D rule. word. What's, big the, what's rule. the D word? Divorce. Divorce, that's right. We have never in 20 years used the D word, the divorce. I don't even like to say the word, but you know, we don't use it. We don't use it, at, we don't weaponize it against each other. When we're in a big argument, we don't say, you know what, then. I'm just gonna get a divorce, or oh my gosh, do you, we don't even joke like you know. If you do that, you're asking for a divorce. We do not even joke like that. We don't say that. We don't confess that because that's a confession, and that you don't ever want to um, uh, make it make light of it. It's a big thing, and uh, it's it's definitely the plan of the enemy for our lives and for our marriage, and we're not gonna confess that. And so God hates divorce. The Bible says, back to the Word of God, He hates divorce. Now. What is the biblical grounds to divorce if there's ever infidelity in marriage? That's correct. But even Jesus says, if you find in your heart to forgive, then forgive. But if not, then we understand. And so, um, but never use the D word. Say with me, say, I'm never going to use the D word. Never going to use the D word. Turn to your spouse and say, I'm not going to use the D word. Say, I'm not going to use the D word. It doesn't even exist. Not even an option. That's like, we thrown, we thrown that away, okay? Because till you said it on your vows. Remember you said, till death do us, us part. part. That's what it said. It's not what you said. And you kept talking. You didn't, you didn't shut up. You're like, for better or for worse. You know, and you just kept, you kept talking. So that's the covenant you made before God. We want to live up to that covenant. Number nine, have sex often and have fun. I yes. think we pretty much talked about it. Yeah, come on. I got to clap for that. Clap, 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 clap. Right? So have sex often and have fun. We talked yes, about that a, a lot. Number 10, staycations. So this was the 777 principle. So every seven days, go on a date. Every seven weeks, do a staycation. And this is something that has helped our marriage. Uh, turn off like half of these ACs. You did put it really cold. It's freezing in here, man. It's colder in here than outside. You know? So cold? Turn it off. We got a building fund to raise. Just turn them all off. Turn it all off. No AC. Just blow on each other. <laughs> just joking. Staycation. So this is something that's helped our marriage. Is like, I'm telling you, this has saved our marriage. I'm just 20 years, how we've been successful. Is don't think that you have to go on like this dream Tahiti vacation right, for it right, to be a vacation. Right. Brother, go, go just get a hotel at, at the remember that Holiday Inn. I remember that one, you know what I mean? But, you know, get, just get like the Hilton or the Marriott. Bring, I mean, somewhere, you know what I mean? And let me, teach, <laughs> let me teach you a hack. Let me teach you a hack. I'm trying to give you a hack right now, okay? With your reward points. So get yourself some type of credit card that you can pay off monthly because I'm the finance guy. Right? Don't, don't make him debt. But just something that pays off monthly when you get your reward points. With your reward points, you go and get a Marriott. It don't cost you nothing because you're getting points as you're just normally spending, right? And so staycations have saved our marriage. Like, and I mean yes. saved our marriage. We're like, you know yes. what? We're just going to go away for two days or a day and just, you know, over, like the date night turns into the date. Show, you know what I mean? And so th it's like that. Man, I'm just telling you. Do stay staycations. Stay night in with me? Yeah. My goodness. No, it's great. Amen. Awesome. <laughs> So you just, you know what I mean? He's and so I'm man. just telling you that, that has saved our marriage. So yes. do staycations. You don't right. got to go to, you know, England or, or somewhere like, right. man, one day we're going on vacation three years from now. You know what I'm saying? Yes. It'll save your marriage. So staycations. No um, yeah. And then if you have kids, you could put them with a uh, grandma or someone that's very trusted. Be like, grandma, the, your, your, your grandkids have just been talking about you. Like. <laughs> 
they've been missing you. You know what I mean? And so, okay. Number 11, laugh together and be each other's best friend. Yes. I love laughing with him. I mean, we have to have moments where we have our inside jokes and we, like my husband was saying earlier, we have the look on each other's face and we know, I think those are some of our funnest moments where, um, you know, we're in bed at night and it's the middle of the night and all the kids are asleep and we, we are like belly laughing and we're trying to be quiet and just having those moments that it's, it's, he's my best friend. He's my best friend. And if you reserve those moments only with your girls, and you neglect to have that time with your husband, well, then you guys are just roommates, you know? And it's important to have that best friend relationship where you go out and you you know that you're going to have a great time. And, you know, laughing with each other, it takes an investment. It takes an investment of just spending time together and creating your own inside jokes. Have you ever had a best friend where you complete, well, maybe the girls, but you complete, you you're, well, women, you complete each other's sentences, sentences, you know? Oh, yes. That's what I was going to say. I know. I was just timing it. <laughs> Oh, I thought you were coding, um, you know, Frozen. No? Yeah, you know, I watched the movie oh, all the time. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, some people ask us, even uh, since we're talking about our 20 things, um, you know, you guys, you, you talk so well together when you're on stage or whatnot. How do you guys do that? And to us, it's just natural because we're, we're constantly in communication with one another. We're constantly talking to each other. I mean, he updates me on what's going on in, in his life and this endeavor and this business and whatnot. And I update him on what's going on here and there and what I'm doing next and what I'm preaching next and where I'm going next and all these things. So we're constantly in conversation with each other about each other's lives. And then with that just comes this bond. And, you know, laughing together creates a bond as well. Because I know that when I'm with him and when he's with me, we're going to have a great time together. And then I look forward to our date nights because we get to have more of that. And one thing, you know, my husband on Monday, yes, it's his day off. And it's his day of rest. And I just want to add this to that. It's his day of rest. And I've told myself the day, and on his day of rest, we go on our date breakfast. Um, you know, we, we spend intimate time together. We um, maybe uh, go out and do something together. And I told myself, and this is my, my personal prayer throughout our 20 years, that, Lord, I pray that I never stop being part of my husband's definition of rest. I pray that when he thinks of resting after preaching several services and preparing the message and firing up the team and serving and doing what he does and doing his businesses and endeavors and all these other things, that when it's time for him to rest, that he, I am the first person and first thing that he thinks of to be with him. So good. Powerful. Guard, guard that. So laugh with each other. And if you don't know each other's humor, each other's then you have not friend. spent enough time with each other. If you've grown distant, it's time to get back you know, um, things that you do, movies. We love good sci-fi movies. We you know do. what I mean? That's yes. a lot of fun. Okay, number 12. I got to move quick. Um, learn each other's love language. Learn each other's love language, right? The five love languages, um, acts of service. What are they? Yeah, yeah so um, words of affirmation, acts of service, physical touch, gifts, yeah. giving gifts, and quality time. Quality time. I'm physical touch. No, you're I'm not. just joking. You're, you're, I like your actually, physical touch. I'm just joking. You know, it yeah. does go with your acts of service. <laughs> <There's so. laughs> hey, this is awesome. I like this marriage he, he loves Praise acts God. of service. So anyway, learn each other's love language. You've got to know because I am acts of service, and so I feel most love when she says, I took care of that for you. I'm like, yes. Yes. You are the woman. You're a boss lady. Like, yeah, you know. You're, you're, that's just Do my, me. like, thank yeah. you. It's just, it's a really And then he love. gives me my love language, which is words, words of, of affirmation. Yeah. So but like, oh, in yes. my early years yeah. of marriage, oh. I thought acts of service. So I'm like, I did this for you. She's like, mm, that's not my love language, right? No so me. I had to learn her love language, which are words. And fellas, if, I grew up with four brothers, so it's all boys. So I had to explain to my wife, like, listen, I wasn't walking around my house telling my brothers, you're just so awesome. You know what I mean? I'm like, you got to work with your boy here, you know? So I had to learn this. Guys, listen to me. I had to learn this stuff. And this stuff, I was like, I had to go like, you look so beautiful today. I wasn't telling my brothers that. <laughs> I'm like, you look so, so guys, let me teach you. Look to your spouse right now and look her in the eyes and tell her, you look so beautiful today. She's like smiling already. Oh, thank you. Okay. <laughs> You got to say that stuff, right? And so it, words of affirmation, building each other and up. And it was the same challenge for yeah. me, you having acts of service. Uh -huh. I mean, if we're talking sp specifically about our relationship, yeah. 
Acts of Service was hard for me because I was the, I'm the baby of the family. So everything, pretty much the cooking, the cleaning, the laundry, a lot of things got done for me mm -hmm. before I even had a chance to get to it because everybody was older than me and did it. So coming into the marriage, it's like, oh, he wants me to cook. He wants me to clean. He wants this. He wants that. He wants and that too. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. oh, my goodness, this does not come naturally for me. Yeah. So it's like, if, if anything were my, na I, I'm trying to get, just like he tried to give me acts of service to equate love to me, I tried to douse him in words of affirmation in hopes that it would blind him from the dishes, you know? <laughs> and it would do nothing for him. So it has taken all of 20 years for me to get to that place where those things come more naturally to me. I will say it's not even still my first thing to do. I have to remind myself that it's something that is important to him because I can naturally default to just giving him tons of words affirmation because that's my love language. And, and work with each other. So like she worked with me, like she was like, no problem, honey. I'm like, I'm trying, you're right. You know, on her list she would say, you know, if you could just say more and I'm like, you're right. And she worked with me and I worked with her because act service, my mom, she can cook y'all. Oh yes, like, she can. She can cook. Yes. When, when my wife made the first steak for me, <laughs> That I, thing. I didn't know you had a seasoned steak. I, I did not understand. That thing bounced off the floor. It fell and it went up to the roof. It was like, I mean, the rice was like, this is awesome. I didn't have salt. For, yeah, I didn't know. You didn't know. That you had the so salt. So we worked with each other. Yes, and now though did. she can get down with a good steak, y'all. Yeah, I'm telling now, you, she can get down with a good steak. Now Appreciate I have it. my specialty. Yeah, specialty. Yes. So work with each other. Can I get a good amen? <laughs> yes. All right. Okay. Number, what time am I at? Number 14. Number 13. Uh, well, forgive quickly. 13. Forgive quickly. Forgive, forgive quickly. quickly. The one who quicks, the one who forgives the quickest is the happiest person. Yes. And so um, let no bitter root grow inside of you. Just let it go. Someone say, let it go. Learn to forgive quickly. I've had to learn to forgive because not I hold a grudge. And at, in the earlier years of our marriage, I'm just being honest. We'd do like a three-day not talking to each other. You know? You know? Well, and, I want to talk. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Talk. And so, you know. I like over three, We wouldn't forgive. Like, We'd hold three-day, three, three day, four-day, five-day grudges. And so we had to learn, you know what? Let's just, the sooner we deal with it, and get over with it, the healthier we are. There's always yeah. one that doesn't want to talk at all, and then yeah. the other one that is like chasing you around the house. Yeah. Like, we need to talk. Let's talk. Can we please talk about yeah. this? Can we make up now already? Yeah. And, and if you need a breather, me. it's totally okay to say, give me five minutes, give me 10 minutes. Yeah. Or, I had to or, learn or his let face. me just take a walk around the block and let me just cool down. Totally okay, but you can't <laughs> say, give me three days, give me a week. Right. The whole silent treatment right, stuff. Right, right. It does not work. Say amen. And I had to learn not yeah. to smother him. Yeah. Like, I can't block doorways. Yeah. Yeah. Like, we're going to talk about this because yeah. I would do that. Yeah, and it's like, yeah, like praise the Lord. Oh, my gosh. Hey, man, I'm just going to sit down. Hey, man, yeah. <laughs> Marriage cycle. Number 14, learn to say sorry. Would you forgive me? This is important. I had to learn this. So turn to your spouse right now. Yes. Guys, you go first. Say this. Say, I'm sorry. I don't, all the guys didn't say it. Look at your spouse and tell her, say, I'm sorry. Would you forgive me? You better get good at that, guys. If you have a hard time saying that, you're going to have a hard marriage, man. Because we don't want to, and even if, it, it's, not about, it's not about being right or wrong, it's about moving forward. Did you hear what I say? It's not about being right or wrong, it's about what? Moving forward. And so there's times I say, you know what, I'm sorry, you're, I, I'd say, you're, I'm sorry that you're wrong, no, I'm just kidding, I'm sorry, <laughs> just kidding, yeah. You know how we are, guys. I said, I'm sorry, would you forgive me? Because I just want to move forward. I'm done with it, it's over, let's so... And then now, ladies, your turn. Look at your, look at your man and tell him this. Say, I'm sorry. Would you forgive me? And you're going to say, yeah. You know what? Thank you. Let's move on. And then don't be like, but wait, there's a principle. There's a problem. Just let's move forward. There's no, the win is when you both move forward. Say amen. Okay. Number 15, share what God has been speaking to you. Share what God, what has helped us in our 20 years of marriage is I will share with her what, I've, what God has been speaking to in my devotional. Yes. A lot of times she'll share me, with me what God has been speaking to her in her devotional time. Well, she'll be like, you know, I was reading my Bible today, and, and man, honey, i got to share the scripture. And, and I'm like, man, that just like, it, it invigorates the spiritual fire in our marriage. So I'll be like, hey, honey, I was studying, and this Sunday this one I'll be ministering on. And she's like, wow. And we're just sharing because we're discipling, right? We're, we're going back, and iron sharpens iron. And so share with each other what God is speaking to you. Because if not, then the truth is 
are you in God's word? Like, is God talking to you, you know? So share with each other, this is what you're learning, this is what God is speaking to you, and do that. Number 16. Oh, well, I just want to say, because we're one, yeah. we've seen throughout 20 years that God will say something to me for you. Mm -hmm. And God will say something to you for me. Totally. Yeah. And when we share with one another, yeah. it's almost... Well, it's with God at the center, and it's almost like we're in our own service. <laughs> Amen. And we're building each other up. Yeah. And we're having this this time between each other and yeah. the Lord. And then so many elements are in that when you build your spouse up from what you heard from the Lord. That kind of goes back to speaking prophetically. Yeah. So number 16, dream together. So dream together, work towards a goal. What's what's like your, your, your marital dream? And so I asked you to write that down during lunch. Have a marital dream. Like this is where I, I want us to be 10 years from now, five years from now. And it can involve, of course, even financial goals, right? We're going to own our own home 10 years from now. Let's be honest. Share a marital dream. You know, we're going we're gonna to have multiple properties 10 years from now. Share it. We're going to, you know, we're going to own multiple companies. Put it on there. We're going to be a God-fearing family. Like, just, you got to have that, that, that dream together. And I'm going to tell you this. God will exceed what your dream is. But if you don't have a dream, you don't know what God wants to do. So you have to put pen to paper a goal that is not on a paper is not a goal. It's a fantasy. So sit with your spouse. And I would write, like, honey, this is what we're believing God for. And let's, 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 we would sow towards it, give to God, pray over it. This is going to be our dream. We're going to build this. And, we're, and, that. and now we're living in the days we dreamed about 20 years ago. Come on. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Amen. So dream together. And once you write it down, you know what, what, what to accomplish. Feels like we're still just beginning. We are just beginning. <laughs> we're just getting started, y'all. Come on now. That's why God called me, I believe, earlier because I'm 41. I'm just getting started. I got another 50 year run in me. Amen. Let's yes. go. Amen. Number 17. Uh, stay healthy for one another. Stay healthy. Stay healthy for one another. That's both spiritually and physically, okay? Stay healthy. Um, I, just, I say this with all the love and respect don't let yourself go. Do not let yourself go. Like, don't just be like, well, I'm married. Oh, well, this is who you married. All right, praise God. Yeah, you know I mean? And so I'll just speak from a guy's behalf. Okay, guys, come on, somebody, you know? Like, we want to make sure that for our spouse, we stay healthy spiritually and physically. Like, we got, we got, to, we got to check ourselves, okay? It's not going to be popular, but I'm going to say it. The Bible says, beloved, I got to go to the Word of God. I pray that you prosper in all things. Say all things. He says that your soul prospers and that you be in good health. So the Bible cares about your physical well-being. How am I going to be a good provider for her if I'm not healthy into my 40s and 50s and 60s? Come on, somebody. Amen. So I got to make sure. Yeah, I appreciate the clap. Thank you so much, right? So that's part of it, guys. And that's what's helped us in 20 years of marriage. It's like I want to be healthy as well. So I got to watch myself. And I'm not going to lie. You know, COVID, man, it put a number on you, boy. I started seeing numbers on that scale I ain't never seen before. I'm like, when I said expansion, Lord, come on, somebody. <laughs> So same I had like, Both we, got, of us. we got to yes. pull that thing because, you know, at the same, I don't want to just let myself go. Oh, well, that's who you married. Too bad. You know, and here I and I just let myself, you, you, that, that to me is, is a neglect of the temple God gave you. Now, I'm not telling you to try to live up to, you know, 0% body fat. Stop it. The point is take care of yourself. Be healthy, okay, for one another. Um, that health is wealth. Write that down. Health is wealth. Health is wealth, you know. Like, you know. If you have young kids, you know, and you're like, I can't even, I, I start breathing, I can't even run with my kids. That's not good. Come on, can we have mature talk here, guys, okay? It's not good, all right? Like, you know, you should be healthy where you can run with your kids and, and, uh, and be, in, and you should, you should be at that place, right, where even in, in your older years, God's carrying you in vitality and all of that. And recently, we started eating healthier, yeah. and we started yeah. exercising more. We're Amen. doing it together, and it's exciting, it's and it makes it fun, yeah. and... Like we, we actually talked about it this morning. Between the two of us, we have recently lost 40 pounds. 40 pounds, yes. man. We In lost past, a, a kid. past two months, Yeah, three something months. like that, yeah. So we, cause we're, we're, we're having too much fun, you know what I'm saying? We're hey, praise God. Fun. But right. we're doing it together. Yeah. hello. And it's a lot of fun yeah. doing it together. Right. It's more motivating to do it yeah. together. We're giving each other compliments galore. Yeah. And that's marriage, right? That's, that's the marriage. fun part of marriage is that we get to do that together. We're yeah. eating and it's the a battle. same meals. It's and, a battle, yeah. Yeah, it and, is. And, and have fun, of course, but you oh, know what I mean. Fun. Number 18, involve each other in big decisions. I'm going to move rapid yes. here because I have to end by 3.30. That's, 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 that's my, my cutoff time. Involve each other in big decisions. Number 19, tell each other where you are. This is accountability. Um, yeah. I think this is a big one to say for everybody where, like, my wife always knows where I'm at. You know, don't be like, where were you? I was just gone for, like, two days. What the heck? What are you talking about? <laughs> where are you? You know what I'm saying? Like, 
And uh, I'd be surprised when we're like, well, you know, just, um, why, are you, why are you trying to be all on me? It's like you're married. You need to be accountable to each other, right? So w what's your day look like? Where, where are you? Like you, that should be something between each other. And uh, we, we don't just do things without telling each other. So like if I'm going to go somewhere, I'm like, hey, honey, I'm going to go. Um, you know, a friend, a, a, a friend invited me out to their conference service, and we're going to be hanging out after, have some dinner. Just let you know I'm going to be out, probably be home pretty late. I, I tell her. Now, that's not me checking in. Oh, you got to check into the ball and chain? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> stupid. You know what I mean? Like, it's my wife. I just, it's mutual accountability. You know, yeah, it just, I'm, I'm just landing on where I'm at because she's my wife. Yeah. This has kept us, this is what has protected holiness in our marriage. Because yeah. some of you guys fight that level of accountability, and that's why you get yourself into trouble in your places you shouldn't be. Hello, somebody, okay? And so, and say with my wife, she'll be like, hey, just, you know, I'm going to go to the mall. Come on, somebody. Hey, man. All right. Or she'll be like, hey, I'm going to go, you know, to my mom's, or hey, I'm going to go over here. Just, just mutual accountability. That has protected our marriage yes, from not, not allowing space for the devil to invade. Put a right. good amen right. on that. Amen. And last but not least, just read number 20 and we're done. Not every fight is worth it. Let it go. Go ahead. Give me some thoughts on that. No? Me? Okay. Yeah. All right. So not every fight is worth it. And so bottom line is um, sometimes you got to go, this ain't worth it. You know, it's just, let's just, it, it's just, let's agree to disagree and, and let's just move forward. And uh, it's just not worth it. So put the, put the gloves down, you know, put the, put the, the, the weapons down and just say, we're going to move forward and it's going to be great. In Jesus' it's name, better to have amen. Oh, now I'm ready. Not every fight's worth it. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, Go. Yeah. Time. We're done. Yeah. Yeah. It's better to have hard conversations than hard arguments. Very good. So go ahead and have the tough conversation. Yeah. If you're not confrontational, if that's not something that you're, you know, you avoid it or whatnot, then it's more important that you have the hard conversation so that you can avoid the train wreck that will await you if you don't have the conversation. So it's easier to have the hard conversation. You know what? I need to talk to you about something. How many times do I say that to you? All the time. You know, I need to talk to you about this. <laughs> hey, we need to talk about this. And he knows, yeah, then, then it's a priority. And that when you say that to your spouse, that that if you're the one hearing that, that you make it a priority to listen and to sit into it because you know that this smaller conversation, though it may be uncomfortable and somewhat hard, it's to avoid a blow up later. So that has helped us a lot from keeping us from having blow out and blow up arguments, mm -hmm. which are, yeah. have been, I mean, and later some, in these some years. Some stuff just flush it down the toilet. It's not worth it. Like Some of it flush it, yeah. yes. So like I even made a thing for my wife. I'm like, there's levels of things where who cares? Just done, gone, bye, yeah. never bringing it up again. And so just flush it down the toilet. It's gone. And, and truly forgive and forget, okay? Like, like don't be petty, you know? Mm. It's like, well, you know, in 1994, right, you know, at approximately 7 p.m., it was a half moon. And the sun, you know, it's like, bro. <laughs> or, or, I mean, it's like the guy who said, Pastor, pray for me. My wife is historical. And he goes, do you mean, he goes, do you mean hysterical? He said, no, historical. She always brings up the past. <laughs> all right, all right, I'm done. Stop it, Josiah. Let's go.